What's up? Well, this is by request. I was asked to take a look at the Open Suze, Suzy, Souza, however it is pronounced. It's been a while since I've taken a look at something like this. Now, for all you beginners out there who use Ubuntu or something like it, Linux, Mint, Zorn, uh, this is not the same. Uh, Ubuntu and its offshoots, they use what are called Deb Packages .dab. Open SUSE, what you see here, this I believe is RPM for Red Hat Package Management, I do believe. Uh, this is the uh, this is not the full uh, version of Open SUSE. Uh, I downloaded this is less than a gigabyte. I believe the full version was almost five gigabytes. It's there's a lot of software in that one, obviously. This is the uh, the GNOME, what they call the live GNOME version, less than a gig. Uh, if you download something like this, this is not upgradable as the full version would be, according to what I read. But this is the default desktop here, a clean GNOME shell. If you know something about GNOME shell, a very sparse desktop, this is how it is designed. But let's take a look at, here, uh, at this and see what we have. Ignore the, the very top and the bottom panel bar. So we have the live user session. And there is a power off switch. In the original release of this, there was not. Well, it was hidden, but there is now. Very nice. OK, we got wireless internet, sound settings, Universal access settings here, of course, right clicking on the panel bar does nothing. Time and date settings here. This is your activities list here or function here. Now, I don't have this installed, so this may run slightly uh, slow. But if you've seen this before, you know how this works. Personally, I prefer between the standard GNOME shell and Unity, I prefer Unity. But this does look pretty slick, as I always thought it looked when they first came out. Probably if you are a beginner, I would probably go here to show applications. Now this is going to give you a list. That's what you see on the screen. Or you can go to the right here and click by category. And this will bring up all the pieces of software that are installed. Or you can search. The search bar, for example, we can type music. And this will bring up, of course, either the application for music, which is Rhythmbox, or the actual folder itself. Let's take a look and see what we have. Rhythmbox, the default music player, and most, uh, at least the ones that I've seen in most Linux uh, distributions. All right, I don't think I like the, uh, the default fonts here, but that can be changed. OK, so what was the other one here? The music folder, I believe, also came up. Let's take a look at that. OK. Simple. Again, if you're coming from Windows environment, you really shouldn't have any issues navigating uh, through this here. OK. There is a hot corner that, uh, well, ignore the Unity. That there is a hot corner, there we go, that allows you to bring up the applications as you see here it doesn't quite function there we go in the uh, virtual box but I think I got it now the hot corner feature I like uh, the multiple desktops as you see here so for example let's bring up Firefox and go back to the hot corner Like I said, this is running a little bit slow in the virtual machine. OK, we have that there. And if I wanted to, I can start another workspace here. Let's bring up uh, oh, Rhythmbox. OK, go to the hot corner. And I can bring up another workspace. But I think you get the idea of how this works. Of course, your standard shortcuts here to the left. This here at the bottom right, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, okay, that's for my virtual box. They ignore that. I guess, I guess there was an update. Let's take a look and go back to the... Uh, oh, be, before I do this, go through this. One thing about this, if you are a beginner, there are uh, GNOME extensions, uh, very helpful uh, extensions for Linux that can make it easier for a beginner to navigate through this. Now, I will give you an example. 
I'm running Ubuntu Unity. I install the the classic menu extension here, meaning this simple click and go drop down menu uh, that was part of the GNOME 2 environment. Now this can be installed in open in open SUSE if you so choose to choose to. And this may make it easier for you to use something like this if you are coming from Windows versus going through this uh, graphical type of application software that you see here. There's nothing wrong with this, but it is different. But if you've never seen this before, it may be somewhat of a jolt. But this is what GNOME Shell is, does. I actually have this install, the desktop environment installed alongside uh, Ubuntu Unity when I am in the mood to run something else. All right, I went into System Tools, as you see here. Let's take a look at the System Settings and see what that looks like. This is the OpenSUSE uh, website. And if you need more information, you can certainly go here. Let's go to the um, hot corner. All right, this would be similar to, I suppose, the control panel on your uh, Windows machine. And let's see, let's go to, oh, this uses some called YAST. Um, this stands for, I think, it's yet another system terminal installer or something like that. One of you guys, I'm sure, will correct me. But this is how you would navigate through your system settings running something like OpenSUSE. All right, software repositories. Okay, this loads the uh, package manager. Now, this is something, like I said, I haven't messed around in years, so I'm not too familiar with this, but it certainly looks stable. It seems okay. Is it designed for newbies? I'm not really so sure because this is something I don't have installed in any of my machines. Okay, accessing the software failed. This might be because it hasn't been fully installed running this inside a virtual machine. But this will allow you to um, fine-tune, delete, or add software repositories as you would, say, if you were running Ubuntu, Linux Mint, or something like that. All right, let's go ahead and just exit out of all these here. All right, there's your uh, some of the software repositories. You can certainly add, edit, or delete. All right, let's go ahead and get out of this. And just to let you know, I clicked get it and I downloaded, let's see. Yeah, the full version is 4.7 gigabytes. I downloaded this one here, the live known. There is a KDE version of this too. And maybe the, the KDE version might be easier for uh, you know those of you coming from a Windows environment. But as far as this goes, it looks fine. Uh, it's not my distribution or my desktop environment of choice. I still prefer you know what you see here and this is you know of course Ubuntu Unity. Uh, there's nothing wrong with OpenSUSE if you wanted to try something else. This, this, this one is has been a, around a while and it is community supported so if you want to try something different you can download this or if you prefer uh, Ubuntu which is probably more for beginners you can certainly download the uh, desktop environment uh, known which is called GNOME Shell which is a part of OpenSUSE at least this version is and you can log in and out into different desktop environments if you so choose to but as far as the OpenSUSE this is the live GNOME uh, user CD download. I think it works fine. Uh, I don't have any issues or problems navigating through this. Uh, if this is your first time, I strongly suggest that you uh, install the classic menu extension to make it easier to navigate through the software. Other than that, I think OpenSUSE, at least this version, is just fine. Well, that's it. That's it for this review. Let me know if this uh, helped you out. As always, thank you for watching as, and listening. And as always, I will catch all of you sometime in the future.